Hey everyone, welcome back. It is great to see you. The topic of today's tutorial is going to be all about camera shake. This is something that either people love or completely hate to see with a fiery passion. You're going to see shaky cam as a thing in lots of action movies, but I'm not here to talk about whether that's good or bad. The main reason I bring it up is because camera shake is a fantastic way to help make your 3D renders feel a bit more cinematic, a little bit less 3D. It's going to give your shots a much more organic feeling to them. If you're interested in getting your render to look more believable and less CGI looking, I have an entire video dedicated to that right here. And in fact, I wish that I had cover camera shake in that video there, but here we are. Let's dive into how to very easily set up procedural camera shake in Unreal. Now, before we get started, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of classes for creatives. It is a place to explore new skills or dive deeper into existing hobbies or passions. It is the perfect place for both beginners and advanced users alike to pick up a skill set they've always wanted to have, whether that's photography, filmmaking, compositing, effects work in Houdini, learning 3D in Blender. That is all available right here. Now, as someone juggling between a lot of roles these days, between teaching, photography, Unreal productions, making YouTube videos, Thomas Frank's class on productivity for creatives, building a system that brings out your best, is a class that I'm likely going to be watching myself because um, 24 hours in a day is just not enough. Skillshare is constantly releasing new classes and they are curated for learning. And by this, I mean that all of the classes are entirely ad-free. So you won't get distracted or annoyed. Now, because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, I have a special link for you down below. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link down below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so that you can start learning today. With that being said, let's get this camera shake tutorial started. So here I am in the abandoned apartment scene, which you can find for free on the Epic Marketplace, just so you know. The first thing we need to do is to make sure that we have a sequence set up with a camera in it. So I've already made a sequence here by going to cinematics. You can create a new level sequence there. I have one created already right here. I'm going to assume you know how to set up a camera. Once that's done, going to the camera view mode here, you'll see I have a very simple panning camera shot. Nothing fancy at all. But now I want to go add camera shake to this to make this feel a little bit less linear, a little bit less robotic. Now, how do we do that? We're going to go into our content browser right here and we need to create a blueprint actor. Don't worry, it's not advanced at all. We're going to right click, create blueprint class, and where it says all classes here in the search panel, we're going to search for shake. And you'll see here we have camera shake base. Now I've seen other tutorials where people have used the matinee camera shake. From my understanding, it is pretty much the same. You can use whatever one you want. I like using camera shake base right here. Click on this and hit the select button. And I'm going to call this camera shake v001. So now we have our camera shake blueprint created. So what we're going to do now is we're going to double click on this right here to open up the blueprint. And you'll see we now have the typical blueprint graph showing up here. I personally prefer to have a more streamlined version of this and pay attention to what happens when I close this and reopen it. There's no more graph. Now we just get a much more streamlined version of this blueprint. Why that happens, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe it's a bug, maybe it's intentional, but now you know. So what we're going to do here where it says root shake pattern, we're going to click here and set it to Perlin noise camera shake pattern. Which now you'll have the option to unfold the setting here. And now we have a whole bunch of other settings to unfold. The first one I'm going to unfold here is timing, and I'm going to set the duration to zero because zero means that the camera shake will last throughout the entire shot. It's going to last infinitely, so it's going to repeat and loop itself. Otherwise, what's going to happen is you leave it at default is the camera shake will be applied for one second, and you don't want that. You don't want camera shake to occur for only one second. You want it to shake throughout the entire shot. So setting it to zero is the first step. Now we can hit the compile button on the top left hand corner and let's apply this camera shake actor to our sequence for starters. So I'm going to move this out of the way like that and going back to our sequence right here, we now need to add this blueprint to our camera actor. 
So we're going to click on our camera component right here and click on the track button. Go up to where it says camera shake and you'll see that the blueprint actor that we just created now shows up. So we're going to click on this right here and you'll see now in our sequence our camera shake actor now has a bar that we can realign here like this. Now we know that our camera shake will be applied throughout the entirety of our shot. So if I press the play button now, you'll see, well, there's no camera shake. There's nothing there. What's happening? Why is there nothing going on? That's because we now need to tell the blueprint actor how much shake we want to have. And that is where the location, rotation, and FOV come in real handy. So the one I use the most in 90% of cases is rotation for the most part. And you'll see right here, we've got a few more settings. We've got rotation amplitude, rotation frequency, pitch, yaw, and roll. Just for now, I'm going to set my rotation amplitude multiplier to something ridiculous like 10, and just be aware you may get a little bit sick. Notice how now we've got this like crazy swirly motion going on. It's obviously over the top. We don't want this, but this is how it works. So I'm going to tone this back down to something like 1, and you'll see now there is a subtle camera movement going on. Now the next option here, rotation frequency multiplier, that's going to affect how often those shakes occur. So amplitude controls the intensity of the shake, and the rotation frequency controls how often that shake is going to occur. So if I set this frequency to, again, 10, and you'll notice uh, 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 everything is like really, really janky and shaky. Again, way too much, way too strong. I just want to demonstrate the effect. So I'm going to set this back down to one. So generally, I like having a low amplitude and a slightly higher frequency. So I'm going to set this to like two or something and a very low amplitude to like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 maybe. So you'll see right now it is much much more subtle. Adding camera shake is an art of its own. You really need to apply this tastefully because it is very easy to go overboard with this. It is way too easy to just kind of go way over the top and just make your audience feel nauseous. Now, with that being said, we do have control over the individual axes upon which the rotation shake can occur. So I'm going to set the pitch, the yaw, and the roll tabs here so I'm going to start off with the pitch, and I'm going to set the yaw to 0, and the roll to 0 as well. And exaggerate this for effect. You'll see the pitch controls how the camera looks up and down. The yaw controls the left and right movement of the camera. And the roll is going to control the side-by-side -side rotation of it, as you can see. So it's a matter of really balancing these three axes to get the look that you want. So imagine when you're holding a camera, you don't really roll the camera like that, right? Having a little bit of roll can be useful. So again, fine tuning these values is an art of its own. So feel free to go ahead and experiment with that. So I'm going to set this back down to 0.5 or something and turn the roll down to 0.5, yaw to one and amplitude to one as well. So as you can see, very simply, very easily, we've added a subtle camera shake to our camera, and this makes it feel way more real. It feels like someone is actually holding this camera. So I'm going to disable this now, and the same thing can be done with location. And location is going to be the actual position of the camera itself. So if I set this to 1 and let's say 5, notice how that camera is not looking in a different direction. It is purely just moving up, down, left, right, forward, and backward. You can control these movements of each XYZ axis right here. And lastly, we have the FOV, which is the field of view, which means it's going to zoom in and out ever so slightly. So if I set the amplitude to 5, notice how the camera is zooming in and out like this. This is not something I've ever really used, ever because I can't think of a use case for it, but if that is an effect that you want to have in your shot, now you know how. It's also worth noting that you can have multiple camera shakes stacked onto one another. So let me demonstrate right here. I'm going to go back to my content browser, and I'm going to just duplicate this. I'm going to call this version 2. Okay, 
We're going to open that. And going back into the sequencer, clicking on my camera component, I'm going to click on track, camera shake, and you'll see we have camera shake version 2 showing up here. Now you'll see we've got both camera shake 1 and 2 showing up here. And why would you want to do this I like having one camera shake that is very broad and slow moving, just the general rough pans, and having a second one for the micro shakes. Just the very small shakes like that. So let me demonstrate here just to show you. So with the camera shake V1 selected here in the rotation, I'm going to set this to like a slightly higher amplitude than I normally would, but with a very low frequency. So something like 0.5. And let's see how this looks. So notice how the camera shake is very subtle. It's just a very slow, swirly movement. And now in camera shake V2, I'm going to go back to my rotation and set it to a lower amplitude, but a higher frequency. So it's something like 0.2 and something like 5. Maybe not 5, maybe 3. Or 2. So now you may notice we've got some larger, more slower, swirly movements to it, but also some very subtle, slightly janky movements to it. Having two camera shake actors on your camera component can really give you a bit more granular control over the look of your camera shake. You don't have to do this, but I figured this is a great tip to know about, and it might help you a lot in your next project. So if this video has helped you out, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. It makes a really big difference. And as always, happy rendering.